Hi, in the next few minutes, let's talk about how blockchain works. So blockchain is a technology, it's really a math algorithm for a chain of verified transactions. So think of any contract that needs to be authenticated and you probably have a good use for blockchain. So probably the best known example of how blockchain is used is with Bitcoin. So Bitcoin is a cyber currency. It's not actually a currency that you can print. It's digital money. And it was developed in 2009 by this mysterious person, Shatoshi Yakamoto. No one knows who he is, or she, or they, but it is a currency that is virtual and used throughout the globe today. Now, blockchain has other applications besides currency. You can use it with all kinds of things that need to be verified. So you can think of passports and medical records and scores of the game when transactions and titles and deeds and contracts. Anytime that you think of needing someone to verify a signature because there is a consequence for fraud, then blockchain is probably going to work well. So the point of the video here is the math behind it or the concepts of how does blockchain work. So let's think of a transaction as a single block. A block, it has some properties. So in object-oriented programming, you can think of a property such as transaction data. So a transaction data would have something like this. A statement that says, this is a new piece of Bitcoin or a transaction that says, Dave gives Victor $100. Or you could get a receipt from a rent to say you just paid $500 rent. So then when we have a transaction, we have to verify it with something called a hash. So in most computer programming languages, there are hash functions. And when you put in a value to the function, you get an answer that is a number that appears to be random, but it is the same for every time you run the function. So for instance, if I put in the string pay $500, my hash function will always give me this 5A720 and whatever else. You can hash an entire book, you could hash a single letter or a number, and you will get an answer that appears to be random at first, but then it is actually verified as repeatable. Now if you want to know more about hashing, you can see another video that I've created about how hashing works. So if we have this block with transaction data and then a hash value, to make it into a chain, we have another value called the hash of the previous block. And since we have the first block in our chain here, we'll call it our genesis block. We'll just give him the value of zero because there is no previous transaction. But now let's make another transaction. So now we have something else in the chain. We're gonna have another item. So in this case, maybe there's another payment, maybe there's a refund, something goes along the lines that we're going to have another item. We're going to create a hash value for this red block. And now to verify that these two blocks make a chain, we are going to include the hash value from the blue block. And so now we have a combination of these three values that depend on the previous one. And the process repeats. So now when we go to the third block, we're going to take the hash of the red block and include it into our document. Now the way this works is that if somebody tries to modify a piece of the chain, the whole thing will break. So for instance, instead of saying pay $500, we'll just insert one small character. We'll put a decimal point in there and change it to $5. Of course, the hash value then will change dramatically. So even one letter change of a hash will uh, drastically change the outcome. And then people further down the block and they will say, hey, this, this is fraud. Something went wrong in the past. My hash values have changed. So let's put into a group here. Let's say these are a bunch of Bitcoin users and they're all working on creating new chains or new links in the chain. Now, they don't rely on a single collection of blocks. Instead, we do what's called a distributed ledger. Everybody that's in the game gets to have a copy of all of the blocks. And so we can have kind of a, a history that is not in one location. So let's say our second person here says, I'm gonna just modify my block a little bit. I'm gonna change that $5 to $500. And then somehow she's able to perpetrate her fraud and she gets another person to agree that her blockchain is the correct version. So now it's just a simple matter of looking at the group and to say, we have a discrepancy. We're going to say, we got two people here that say yellow is the new answer and everyone else says green. 
So we're going to simply take a vote now, and we're going to count up the majority. So in our case of only five people, three of the people were able to outvote the two, and so the fraud is prevented. So this works in the real world because there's probably millions of people playing in the blockchain of Bitcoin, and you'd have to take over more than half of the network and fraud uh, perpetrate your fraud that way if you wanted to actually change the ledger. And they make it difficult too, so that changing the ledger or changing any value in your block is not an instantaneous process. The math involved slows it down so that it becomes vir virtually impossible for fraud to occur. So that gives you an idea of the a theoretical high-level view of blockchain. Now what we're going to do next is I'm going to show you a programming example so we can actually create a block. So in the code we're going to demonstrate a few blocks in a chain and then we're going to show the hash values of each block and then we will show what an attempt at fraud looks like. 